I'm gonna teach you how to make $1 million per year on YouTube. When I first started this channel back in 2021, I went basically eight months straight, posting about two videos per week, making zero dollars. But then the very next year, I earned over $600,000 from this same YouTube channel. And by the end of 2023, I'll have earned well over $1 million from YouTube. And I did all of this from the comfort of my home by simply making YouTube videos. And my goal by the end of this video is that you'll be able to do the exact same thing Thing for yourself. Back when my channel was really small, maybe 200 subscribers or so, I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine who happened to be a fellow small YouTuber as well. And I remember saying to him, I think I figured out how to grow on YouTube. And he said to me, how, Joshua? I thought that growing on YouTube was just luck. And after that conversation, it was no more than two months later, my channel took off. And I remember he called me after I passed 100K subscribers and he said, Joshua, you were right. Everything you told me a couple of months ago, you were spot on about. And in this video, I wanna share with you exactly what I told him. Now, listen. I get it, YouTube is very intimidating. Over 90% of YouTube channels fail to ever become financially successful. But the reason that 90% of people who start on YouTube end up failing is because they're not starting off on the right foot. They're not doing the right things to become successful on this platform. And so what ends up happening is they start a YouTube channel, they start posting videos, but their videos don't get any views and their channel gets no traction. And they end up wasting months, if not years of their life trying to live the YouTube dream. And when it doesn't work out for them, they're left kicking themselves, thinking like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I make this work? Does the YouTube algorithm hate me? When in reality, people who fail on YouTube only fail because they fail to follow the right steps. And so if you don't wanna be a part of the 90% of people who end up failing on YouTube, and you would rather be a part of the 10% who end up becoming successful, here's exactly what you need to do. The first step, and this was the first thing that I told my friend before going viral, was you need to learn how the YouTube game works. Let's say for example that you sat down at a table with your friends or family and they said to you, hey, let's play poker. The problem though is that you have no idea how to play poker. And so you start playing this card game and you end up losing the game. Well, no surprise, right? Like you don't know how to play the game and so you end up losing the game, right? Because the people that you're playing against do know how to play the game and they're gonna beat you every single time. If you don't understand how the YouTube game works, you will lose the game. Because once again, there are people who do know how the game is played and they will gladly take your views, take your subscribers and take your sponsorship deals. And so the question becomes, how does the YouTube game work? Well, it's actually very simple. YouTube is a for-profit business, meaning they are very interested in making a profit. How exactly do they make a profit? Through advertising. And the advertising is done on top of the user-generated content that's uploaded to the website. And so the content that the individual creators are making is what drives YouTube. And so YouTube wants the creator to excel as much as possible, because when the creator excels, YouTube also excels, right? And so there's kind of this mutual interest between YouTube and the creator. But but keep in mind, YouTube is still a business. And in the grand scheme of things, YouTube is in the business of attention. And so YouTube wants people to stay on the platform for as long as humanly possible, right? Because the longer people are on the website, the more videos they watch, the more ads they watch, the more money YouTube makes. And so here we are at the crossroad. YouTube highly values the creator because without the creator, YouTube wouldn't exist. But YouTube also highly values the viewer because without the viewer, there would be no advertisers, which means there would be no money, and therefore the platform wouldn't exist. And so the YouTube game looks exactly like this. YouTube wants to satisfy the viewer when they visit the website, and the viewer is satisfied when they're watching videos that meet their interest and keep them engaged. And so this means that YouTube wants to very carefully serve specific content to the viewer that they think the viewer will enjoy. And so if you, as the creator, can make content that the viewer will enjoy, then you are are aligning with YouTube's business goals. As a result of this, YouTube will push your content far and wide and you'll end up getting more views, more subscribers, and making more money than you ever dreamed was even possible. But if you're not making content that viewers enjoy watching, then you are not aligning with YouTube's business goals. As a result of that, YouTube will not push your content and your channel will never grow. And so to summarize everything that we just said here about the YouTube game, here are the official YouTube game rules. Rule number one, make content 
content that the viewers will click on and enjoy watching. Rule number two, follow rule number one. And finally, rule number three is to refer to rule number two. At the end of the day, if you fail on YouTube, it is not a YouTube problem, it is a you problem. And so now that you understand how the YouTube game actually works, let's talk about how you can actually start playing the game for yourself. Now, on a very basic level, when it comes to your content, YouTube only really cares about three things. People clicking on your content, people watching your content, and people being satisfied with your content. And we'll start first with people clicking on your content. In order to get people to click on your content, you need to have the right title, thumbnail, and topic. We call this the three T's. And each of these T's are extremely important for getting people to click on your videos. And we talk in great detail about each of these things in the Pro YouTuber course, which I'll link down below in the description. But let's briefly go over each of these things now. So of all three of the T's, I believe that the topic is the most important element. Because I've seen videos that have incredible titles and thumbnails, but the topic of the video is too obscure, and so no one actually clicks on the video. On the contrary, I've seen videos that have horrific titles and thumbnails, but the topic is something that piques people's interest, and so the video ends up getting a ton of views. And so by far, the topic is the most important element of the three T's, but you still obviously want to have good titles and thumbnails because you want to try and capture as many clicks as possible. And so let's talk about this, and we'll start first with titles. What makes makes a good title. Well, first, your title needs to actually be accurate and descriptive. In other words, the title of your video should accurately reflect what your video's content is actually about. At the same time, though, you want to make sure that your titles are both attention-grabbing and intriguing. For example, let's play a game here, okay? Is somebody more likely to click on this title, Investing Basics 101 with Graphs and Charts, or this title, Investing for Beginners, How to Retire a Millionaire? Now, both of these titles are about the same exact topic, but this video here, uh, How to Retire a Millionaire, will get significantly more views because it has a much more intriguing title. Some other important tips when it comes to your titles is you want to try and include keywords in your titles whenever possible. This will help your video to rank a lot higher in the search results page, which of course will lead to more views. And again, we talk about all of these things in great detail in the Pro YouTuber course. But you also want your titles to be clear and concise and you want to avoid using jargon or technical terms that your audience may not understand. For example, instead of titling your video, How to Use a Leavening Agent to Make Your Cake Rise, you would instead title it something like How to Make Your Cake Rise Perfectly, right? And so you're avoiding using any technical terms that a beginner probably won't understand. And as a bonus, using numbers in your titles is a very, very good way to create curiosity. Let's talk about thumbnails now. What makes a good thumbnail? A good thumbnail starts a story that the viewer wants to know the ending to. What exactly does this mean? Well, if we were to put two different thumbnails on the screen, which one of these would you be more likely to click on? Well, chances are, if you're being honest, you said this one. Why? Well, because this thumbnail is creating curiosity. And to combine with the title, this thumbnail is telling a story. And it makes sense given the view difference between these two videos. You see, people really only click on thumbnails that make them emotionally triggered, right? Perhaps it's making them angry or fearful, scared, or it's making them feel hopeful, right? Whatever the case, as a general rule of thumb, if your thumbnail is not emotionally triggering somebody, chances are it's not a good thumbnail. Now, on a much more practical level, here are some really important tips for creating good thumbnails. First, you wanna make sure that you're always using high quality images. This is probably pretty obvious. Using contrasting colors is also extremely helpful because it helps your thumbnail to stand out from the sea of thumbnails that exist on YouTube. And here's an example of that. These are both the same exact thumbnail, but watch what happens when we give this one some contrasting colors. Almost immediately, this thumbnail stands out and it's because of the contrasting colors. Also, if you're using text, you want to make sure that your text is easy to read. The text should be legible, which means you should probably avoid using any type of like fancy script font, but it should also be large enough that you can see the text from a distance. This also means you should probably limit how much text you're putting on your thumbnail. Anything more than probably about four words,
words, it's too much. A good way to test this is to zoom out in whatever software you're using to make your thumbnails. And after zooming out really far, ask yourself, can I still read the text? If the answer is yes, then your text is good. It also helps to have a strong focal point in your thumbnail. And let's use these two thumbnails as an example. In this thumbnail here, there is no obvious focal point, right? Like the welcome to Florida sign, the road trip text, and the actual paramotor itself are all competing for focus. On the other hand, this thumbnail here has a very obvious focal point. Okay, and so that's the first thing that YouTube cares about the most, people clicking on your video. And then after they click on your video, getting them to actually watch your video. And this is the second thing that YouTube cares about the most. If you can get people to watch your video for even a decent amount of time, your video will do extremely well on the platform. And so let's go ahead and tackle this subject, okay? How exactly can you make content that people want to watch? Well, on a very basic level, it comes down to three different elements, audience, hook, and production. And once again, we talk about all of these things in great detail in the pro YouTuber course, which again is linked down below in the description. But let's briefly go over the basics of what all of this means and how they contribute to your videos actually being watched. And we'll start first with the audience. It is going to be absolutely critical that you know who your audience is. And another way of saying this is what is your niche? Now, at the very beginning of your journey, like when you first start your channel and you start making videos, knowing what your niche is is not super important. But eventually, you are going to want to define who you're actually making content for. Listen, all kidding aside, okay? There are people out there who really believe that in order to grow on YouTube, you don't have to have a niche. They'll tell you things like, you don't have to niche down to grow on YouTube. And the problem with this is that it is grossly incorrect. YouTube themselves has specifically said, that having a niche will likely help you to get more views, which leads to your channel actually growing. And channels that don't have a niche and they just post all different types of content, literally 99% of the time, those channels never grow. Now, here lies the most difficult part of starting a YouTube channel for most people. What do I actually start a YouTube channel about? What is my niche? So in a perfect ideal world, your niche should be something that you enjoy talking about, like you could make videos about this thing, but it should also be something that has an accessible audience, meaning that your channel will actually be able to grow to a decent or large size if you make content about this subject. And lastly, it should be something that you can make money from. And your niche will basically be at the center of all three of these things. Now, this is a lot easier said than done, okay? And so I'm gonna really quickly walk you through how you can potentially figure out what your niche is. What I want you to do is just take a step back and ask yourself one simple question. What do I enjoy talking about. In other words, what could I talk about for hours completely free? If you could talk about video games for hours, so be it. If you could talk about the latest celebrity gossip for hours, great. The point here is just to try and identify what piques your interest, right? And it could be multiple things. I want you to write as many things down on a piece of paper because then we can take all of these things and we can start exploring what we can turn into a real YouTube niche. And if you can't answer that question by yourself, like what do I enjoy talking about, perhaps try asking a friend or like a family member or somebody who just knows you relatively well and I want you to ask them, hey, what things do I talk about all the time when we're together. But above all, just remember that finding your niche can take time. And so don't be discouraged if you can't figure out what it is right away. Now, after the audience, your video hooks are the next most important thing to focus on if you want people to watch your videos. So what exactly are video hooks? The video hook is the very beginning of the video. Typically, it's the first three to 10 seconds of the video where you say something that captures the viewer's interest. And the reason the video hook is so important and this is something that I don't hear basically anybody talking about on YouTube, but the reason the video hook is so important is because if you can't hook somebody to watch the first five to 10 seconds of your video, then they will never watch the rest of your video. You have to hook them within the first few seconds to then get them to watch the rest of the video. Because even according to YouTube, the first 30 seconds of your video are absolutely crucial, okay? And so if you can get a large percentage of people to watch the first 30 seconds of your video, then you're doing something 
something that literally 90% of YouTubers can't do, and more than likely your videos are going to perform well, which means they'll get a lot of views, you'll get a lot of subscribers, and obviously this is gonna set you up for massive long-term success on YouTube. Now, in the Pro YouTuber course, we have entire lessons dedicated to teaching you how to craft insanely good hooks. But let's go ahead and quickly go over the highlights right here. So for starters, you need to keep your video hooks short and sweet, literally three to five seconds long, okay? Viewers don't have a long attention span. And so if you can't capture somebody, if you can't hook them within the first like three to five seconds of your video, more than likely they're just gonna click off. And let's take a look at two real examples of video hooks right here. So both of these videos are about the same exact subject, paramotors. And this first video here is an example of a bad video hook, or in this case, no video hook at all, okay? And so let's take a watch. All right, guys, pretty morning here at the compound. There's just a little bit of fog okay. and I'm waiting for it to and burn so, off. And so seven seconds in, if that, and it is extremely boring, right? There's nothing happening. And so it makes sense that after one year of being posted on YouTube, this video only has around 800 views. And so now let's take a look at a good video hook example. Um, I have an odd request. I'm actually uh, right above the restaurant right now, uh, flying a paramotor, like a fan and a paraglider. If I place an order on the app- I'm intrigued. Okay, in fact, I already watched over half of this video before making my video. The hook is very strong, and it makes sense that this video has over 4 million views after about two years. And this is exactly what a good video hook does. It makes you wanna know more. And so if you can master the art of creating strong video hooks, there is no doubt about it. Your videos will get watched longer, which means your average view duration will go up, which means that YouTube will push your content out to more people, which means more views on your videos, which subsequently means more subscribers on your channel, which we keep coming back to this point right here, it means more success on YouTube, and that means more money, more everything. Now, the final way to make good content is the production. Now, a lot goes into the production of your video, right? Like you've got the camera shot and all the different camera settings and things. You've got the audio, uh, the lighting, learning how to structure your videos, learning how to communicate and talk to the camera, learning how to tell stories, to help keep your audience as engaged as possible. And then there's the actual scripting of your video or outlining and all the stuff that goes into that, like the idea generation or the actual research that goes into scripting a video. I mean, there is so much that goes into making one single YouTube video, but here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you just to move all that stuff aside. It is very important. All that stuff is important and it does matter over time. When you're first getting started, there is no reason to try and focus all of your energy on all of these things at once. Instead, I want you to do exactly what I did when I first started making videos on this YouTube channel. I told myself, all I need to do is focus on getting 1% better with every video that I make. My first video ever, second video, third video, fourth video, they're all gonna be pretty Pretty bad at the beginning but that doesn't matter because I'm just focusing on making my videos 1% better every video and here's what that looks like in practice okay the first thing I want you to do is identify creators that you look up to people who when you watch their video you say to yourself wow I want my videos to look like that one day for me Peter McKinnon was a big inspiration specifically because his camera shots were so beautiful and I so badly wanted my camera shots to look as good as his and so what you would do is just try to identify different things that you like about different creators, right? For one person, it might just be the way their camera shot looks. For somebody else, it might be their editing. Or I like the way this person uses storytelling to help push their videos forward, right? Whatever it is, you would just identify all these different things about different creators and write that stuff down. Because now, you actually have something to aim at. And so for me specifically, what I would do is before I sat down to start recording a video, I would look at a Peter McKinnon video for example, and I would say to myself, how can I get my camera shot to look a little bit more like Peter's camera shot? And then I would spend 15 to 20 minutes, you know, adjusting my camera shot to try and make it look like Peter's. And with every video that I made, I did this. I just focused on one area and tried to make one small minor improvement to that area. And what ends up happening is over time, 
Little by little, you start improving 5%, 10%, 15%. After 100 videos, you've improved theoretically 100% if you're actually trying to you know, make the small 1% improvements with every video. You'll go back and watch your first videos and be blown away by how much you improved. Now, finally, let's talk about step three of how you can make $1 million per year on YouTube. And that is you have to become better than 90% of people at the YouTube game. Now, this probably sounds way more intimidating than it actually is, okay? And so let me break down exactly what this means. First of all, the fact that you made it this far into the video already puts you ahead of 80% of people. How do I know this? Well, because most people who start a YouTube channel start it blindly, right? And they just continue to run their channel channel blindly as well. With no direction, no interest in actually investing in themselves and investing in their channel to continue to grow it, they just post videos week after week, month after month, and they're just guessing. Maybe this is how I make better content. Maybe this is how I get my videos to appear on the YouTube homepage. Maybe this is how I get brands to want to work with me so that I can consistently make 10, 20, $40,000 per month from brand sponsorships. 80% of people who start on YouTube are just guessing. Now, because you made it this far into the video, that already puts you in the top 20%, right? But how can you get yourself into the top 10% of people who are actually able to become financially successful from YouTube? Well, in addition to everything we talked about in today's video, the biggest thing that you need to do is simply not give up. So many people start a YouTube channel start posting, they're being consistent, they're you know being intentional about getting 1% better with every video. But then they stop posting, they just stop. And little do they know that they were only two videos away from having their first video ever go viral, which would have completely changed their life forever. This is exactly what happened to me. I was posting consistently, my channel wasn't getting any traction, I was frustrated, and I was this close to quitting. And I posted two more videos and the second video that I posted after almost giving up was the video that ended up going viral, completely catapulted my channel, and changed my life forever. It's, it's scary to think about how different my life would look today if I had quit YouTube back then, but I didn't. Now, if you want to take all of the guesswork out of starting a YouTube channel and building it up to be something that's successful, that changes your life forever the way it did mine, then you need to check out the Pro YouTuber course. This course literally took me over one year to fully develop. I poured literally everything into this course. And unlike a lot of other, most other YouTube courses out there, this is gonna be a course that I update every single year with new information, new things that I learned, and just new strategies and tactics that help me to continue growing and being successful on YouTube. And so the course will always be fresh, it'll always stay updated, and you'll have access to it forever. And so I'll leave a link to it down below in the description as well as the pinned comment. Hey, you guys are amazing. I mean that and I appreciate you so, so much for being here. Don't ever forget, you can accomplish anything you want in this life. I don't care what anybody says to you, okay? I'm watching you, I believe in you, and as always, I will see you again very soon. Take care.